Hi everyone, and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 84 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Today is a really nice and autumnal, foggy, cold, and dark Friday in September here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. It is fall or autumn. We had the autumnal equinox earlier this week and happy autumn everybody. It's here. We're all so happy I'm sure. I love it. I'm happy. I love autumn. The apples on my trees are ripening up. The leaves are all over the ground and it's cold and it's wonderful. So we have a Ravelry group for this podcast where you will find what will you find there? Things like giveaways, knit-alongs. We have a knit-along going right now. I will tell you about that in a minute. You can find a link to the Ravelry group in the description box below, and that is where you'll find all the show notes for this episode. So scroll right down there if you want to check out any links for anything that I talk about today. So the knit-along that we have going on right now, it is a make-along because you don't have to knit. You can do whatever you want to make clothing or shawls that are flashy. <laughs> so anything that's, uh, I don't know, flashy and makes a statement, make a statement piece and it'll count for this make along. So uh, there is a Ravelry group chatter thread and an FO thread. So if you wanna see what's going on with everybody, go check out that chatter thread. There is also a hashtag on Instagram, which is FlashyMAL, so check that out too if you're interested in taking part. This make-along is going to go through the end of the year, and there will be prizes. So come join us. It is fun, and it is bright and sparkly and stuff. Okay. That is it for the announcements. We are going to move right into works in progress because I have no finished objects this time. I know. But I do have a couple of things that I have been working on. I have a couple of knitting projects to share with you and a crochet project and also a little sewing project. I'll tell you about that in sewing. Anyway, the first thing that I've been working on is my arachna sweater. This is my entry into the flashy make-along, and it is living in my woodsy and wild bag. It's got a pom-pom on it, and it's got a stitch marker on it that's cool and green and stuff. I'm articulate. <laughs> um, okay, so this is my sweater. I have gotten a lot of progress made on it, and here it is. So this is a sweater by Andy Satterland. It is a top-down yoke pullover where the yoke color work section represents a spider web. And I love spiders, I love spider webs. I think they're wonderful and so I had to make this sweater. Now, let me tell you about the yarn I'm using. And then I'll talk about the knitting of this thing. So the main color, that I've got, which is this green, is a Cormo yarn by Elemental Effects. And it's called Cormo Sport. And it's 100% Cormo yarn. It, I'm pretty sure it's non superwash. Uh, and it's a sport weight. It's very wonderful and springy. It's two ply, and I really like it. I have two skeins of it. The pattern was designed in this exact yarn. And it calls for my size, which is the 34 for two skeins. So that's what I have. And I, so I knit the yoke from the top down. And I told you last week that I messed up a little bit in the color work chart, which isn't a big deal. Uh, pretty much each little section of the spider web is supposed to be slightly different so that there's a little bit of asymmetry to it. I didn't do that because I didn't understand the instructions, so that isn't how mine is, but I did start doing it for the last couple sections down here just because I wanted to start following the directions properly. <laughs> um, so I really like how that came out. The yarn that I used for the contrast color work is, was 
Uh, some hand spun of mine, which was Finn Wool by dyed by Spunky Eclectic. It was in their aquarium colorway. And it was some of my very oldest hand spun. I purchased my spinning wheel, which is a shocked ladybug from Spunky Eclectic online. And they sent me two braids of that fiber with the wheel just for free without telling me first. And man, like six or seven years ago when I got that wheel in the mail and it was kind of, I was kind of just coming into like this whole world of like hand dyers and online stuff and stuff like that. Uh, I was so excited. I was like touched and <laughs> just thrilled that she sent me or that they sent me two free braids of fiber with my very first spinning wheel. Um, it was wonderful. And so this was some of my very first hand spun. I spun those two braids right away and it like, it, they've been skeined up just in my hand spun stash ever since then. And when I caked one of them up for a couple projects ago, I've used this cake of yarn for a few different things so far. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised at how like, okay it is it, for, you know, my first hand spun, my first ish hand spun. Anyway, I held that yarn together with some hot pink lace weight merino and silk yarn dyed by Fiber Nymph Dye Works. I can't remember the colorway name, but it's hot pink. So, that's how that turned out. I really like it. It's weird, but I think it's cool. So, I got to knitting down past the yoke. I separated for the sleeves and I started knitting the body. I tried it on. I have tried this thing on half a dozen times so far because I am very unsure of the fit. So my actual bust measurement is a 32. If I knit something that's a 32, it typically gives me zero ease and stuff. Now this is a 34. It's the smallest size that it comes in and she calls for ideally two to four inches of positive ease, I believe. Not built into the pattern, 34 is the actual measurement of the sweater. So that would technically be my size. Now, if you look at the pattern, which I've showed you on the screen, um, she is modeling it, the designer is modeling it, and on her it looks very fitted, very structured. It's, it looks like a very fitted crop top with like kind of this length of sleeve that she's wearing with something, I don't know, a skirt, I don't, a dress, I don't remember. <laughs> The, the point is, is it looks fitted to me. It looks structured. That's kind of how I expected it to come out. I'm not that good with ease yet. I can't really picture things because I, I, you know me, I always kind of go for like zero ease or negative ease, usually zero ease. So she told me positive ease. That's what I went with. That's what I had to go with because it was the smallest size. Um, but on her, it looks very, like I said, it looks fitted. So I was like, whatever. But I probably should have known that positive ease is going to give me something a little loose. So it looks really loose and I'm a little unsure. Um, I just I expected the fit to reflect kind of what was in the pattern picture. So I expected it to be kind of a fitted crop top. And it's like really big on me. So I tried it on like I said and it's very loose. It has two inches of positive ease for sure. Um, and. So because of that, I felt unsure about how it was going to look on me. I picture it if I knit it to the specifications, which is cropped with three quarter sleeves. I just picture it looking baggy on me in an unintentional way. Uh, I don't know. That's just how I'm picturing it. I'm picturing myself looking like I'm wearing something that is too big for me, not, you know with intentional positive ease, but just something that doesn't fit. So I don't know. I mean, it's, who knows? Who knows? I don't know yet, but that's what I picture. So in my mind, I'm thinking, what can I do to make it not look like that? And so as I'm trying it on, I'm picturing it cropped. It feels like it's going to be weird. So I'm thinking that it feels so far, like all I have is the yoke, that it's going to look better. It's, it feels like it fits more like a sweatshirt you know, like kind of a baggy sweatshirt. So I'm thinking, okay, if I, instead of doing all the waist decreases and cutting it off as a crop, 
if I do a little bit of waist decreases and then go back out, make it longer, make it more like sweatshirt, that might be better for how loose it is up top. But I don't know if I have enough yarn to do that. Another thing that was occurring to me as I was like just past kind of the sleeve separation is the sleeves seem really big. Like the sleeves seem just too big for me. I looked at the schematics. They are knitting up pretty much how she says they should. Uh, and they just feel really baggy. So what I ended up doing when I was separating for the sleeves, because I felt like they were going to be really big at that point, is for the underarm, you oftentimes cast on more stitches when you're separating for sleeves in a yoke or a raglan. And she says to cast on eight stitches for the underarms. I only cast on four. I figured that would kind of give me a little bit less fabric to be working with. Um, and so when I got to like kind of down here, I'm almost at the end. I'm almost done with the body according to the instructions. I got to this point and I was thinking like, I don't know how these sleeves are going to turn out because I feel like if the sleeves are super baggy, I'm going to need to make it more of a sweatshirt style. But if the sleeves aren't super baggy and they look fine and they look fitted, maybe I'll go for the crop and see how it goes. So <laughs> I stopped working on the body. I put them on holders. I started working on the sleeve. The sleeves are definitely baggy. I tried it on and they're going to be loose. Um, hey, squirrel. Okay, so I'm going to myself, I'm sorry, I'm taking you through this long thought process journey of mine. I'm going, okay, so the sleeves are baggy. It's going to be better if I make the body more like a sweatshirt. I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn to do that, though, because I only have two skeins. The pattern is cropped three-quarter sleeves. It calls for two skeins. I, I don't know how much I'm going to have left to do this. So out of the two skeins, I have this much left. It's about... 80 grams right now I think and um, so I don't know exactly what I'm doing also you want to know what's funny <laughs> I'm so opposed to cutting my yarn that I have both the body and the sleeve attached and one is coming from the outside of the cake and one is coming from the inside of the cake <laughs> but anyway so I got to this point on the sleeve I kind of feel like I have a gauge of how it's gonna turn out now I think I'm gonna go back to the body and I think what I'm going to do, I don't know, you guys, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I think I'm going to finish the body just according to pattern. I think I'm going to finish doing the decreases, uh, finish it off, bind it off. And I actually think it's going to be a little longer on me than it is like kind of meant to be on the model because I'm short and I have a short torso. So I think I'm just going to do the body as written and then see what happens with the sleeves. I feel like since the sleeves are a little loose, they're going to look better if I lengthen them. And I think that might be a more important thing than lengthening the body. So I'm going to do the body as written. I'm going to have my whatever yarn I have left over for the sleeves, and I'm just going to knit the sleeves as long as I can. I don't know how this thing's gonna turn out. I don't know if it's gonna be, I don't know if I'm gonna like it that much, just based on the fit. But um, it's coming along, I'm kind of almost done. The body's really close to being done and I just have these sleeves left. The sleeves are really simple, they're just stockinette, so I think they're probably gonna go by pretty quick. And I think I'm just gonna knit the sleeves until I run out of yarn. That's my plan. That is my plan and I don't feel great about this sweater right now just because you know, it's it doesn't feel great to be knitting something that you don't think is going to be that wearable for you. I mean, it's going to be fine. It's going to look fine. But I just kind of don't picture myself at this point wearing it that much. But hey, it's part of the flashy make-along. It's not meant to be a regular in my wardrobe. <laughs> it's meant to be a pop. So I don't know, maybe I'll wear it on Halloween and then I'll never wear it again. I don't know. But so that's where I'm at with this. Hopefully I'll be done with it pretty soon because I don't love knitting on it right now just because I, as I knit on, on it, I get this like, you know, not great feeling of like, eh, eh, whatever. So that's where I'm at. It's fine. It's great. It's, it's a really cool pattern and a great sweater. 
I just don't know if it's gonna fit. And you know what, I should know that by now because I've knit several Andy Satterlin patterns and typically they turn out too big for me. Um, I can't remember if like her patterns typically only go down to a 34 bust or if they go lower typically, and I, I don't remember why. But <laughs> Almost every time I've knit one of her patterns, it turns out a little too loose, whereas she tends to design these types of patterns that seem like they're meant to be very fitted and very structured. Um, I did knit one, which was the Salal, and that fits like fantastically. That fits really well and fitted and cropped and like cute. So that was my one successful one but I kind of maybe should know by now, maybe her designing in my body just don't work that well together. Unless I alter stuff, which, you know, I can do, but I don't know if I want to alter for bust size. That's a little, I'd rather just find a pattern that, okay, anyway. Moving on, that was my Arachna by Andy Satterland. It's a great pattern. I just, you know, you yeah, know, you yeah, know. Moving on to my next sweater pattern. I'm really excited about this one. This is a new cast on. I am test knitting a sweater from my friend Becky Sorensen, who is Soprano Knits. She designed a really beautiful sweater pattern called the Telegram. It is a cardigan and it's got texture all over and it's really beautiful. And so I am test knitting uh, the size one, which is the smallest size. And I'm using the yarn that the pattern will call for. It's not out yet, but um, I will keep you updated as soon as I know of a release date. I'll let you know when you can knit this pattern if you're interested. Uh, but she wrote the pattern, she designed it in La Bienna May's Mondem. So M La Bienna May is a hand dyer in France and Mondem is a yarn base from Rosa Pomar in Portugal. And Mondem is one of my very favorite sock yarns. I love it. I love it so much. My very favorite pair of socks I knit in Mondom yarn. I really like it. Um, now La Bienna May started dying on that base and it's a really beautiful collaboration and I've always wanted to try it. And so I got some so that I could try it in this sweater because that's what she designed it in. And since they're doing a collaboration, uh, La Bienna May really generously offered a really nice discount to her test knitters. So that was exciting. And this is what I'm knitting this sweater out of. So this is Mondom. It's a fingering weight, 100% Portuguese, Portuguese wool. And this is in the color. I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong as I probably pronounced the telegram sweater wrong. I'm not sure. There are accents on both of these words, so I don't really know how to deal with that. But it's the quartz fume colorway. I think that's what it is. That's what I'm going to call it. Anyway. I just pondered for a good hour over which colorway to order of this yarn and um, the colorways on this yarn are so beautiful and this of course is the one I went with. It's a grayish purple. I'm so predictable. I really kind of wanted to try to go like outside of the gray purple realm pink too, gray purple pink. I was like, let's not do gray purple pink. I did gray purple. At least I didn't do pink. I don't know. But I ordered three skeins, which is what the pattern calls for. Here is the one that's caked up. It's so gorgeous, you guys. And here's my sweater so far. So I'm not going to really talk too much about the pattern itself because it's still in test knitting. It's not even out yet. Um, so I don't want to, I don't know, release too many secrets. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but, <laughs> but I'm still not going to, um, but pretty much it's a top down raglan all over texture, which is really simple, like super simple and really fun to do. And that's where I'm at so far. I'm knitting this on a US 3, which is what the pattern calls for. I did gauge swatch and I got perfect gauge. Thank you very much. And I'm using my Haya Haya interchangeable needles, which I love. And there are cables in this sweater. So I wanted to use my Haya Haya's since they are nice and sharp. I thought it would be easier to do the cables in these than in my 
Lickas, which are my wooden needles, which I kind of love right now, but I still love these for sure. So this is where I'm at right now on my beautiful sweater by Becky Sorensen. Uh, you can check it out on her Instagram feed. She does have pictures of the mostly completed object up there. And it's just been a pleasure doing this. I love Becky. I love her patterns, her designs, and I love this yarn. So I was kind of all over this test knit. So I'm excited to show you more as I knit more. Uh, it's a great sweater. I'm really excited to have it. And I'm really, I've been wanting a sweater out of Mondem ever since I first got it. And I think it's just a bonus that it's uh, the La Bien Aimee dyed Mondem. So super stoked. That's living in my, one of my many fat squirrel bags. This was my very first fat squirrel bag. I felt very fancy when I bought this. Cause I was like, I can't believe I'm spending money on a project bag instead of yarn. Cause that's how I used to think. <laughs> Um, okay, so my very last uh, project is a crochet project living in one of my other fat squirrel bags. This is my granny stripe crochet blanket DK version that I am crocheting for my daughter Lucy. I'm using DK weight yarn and a 5.5 millimeter tulip hook, which is my favorite type of hook. It's got the kind of like soft handle that I feel like feels a lot better on my hands than just exposed metal handles. And it's pink, which like goes a long way with me. So, you know. I am using uh, a video tutorial by Bella Coco on YouTube. Um, it is the Granny Stripe Crochet Blanket tutorial, which I will link to in the show notes below. And here it is so far. So I don't remember how many stitches I started with, but in the tutorial, she is doing hers with DK weight yarn. She recommends a number for starting in that tutorial, and that's the number that I used. And it's just, it's gonna be a small-ish blanket for Lucy. She is a baby, so she doesn't need a huge blanket. Um, and I'm using all Moonstone Dyorks yarn. Moonstone Dyorks is my hand-dyed yarn company, and I'm using my Merino DK base, which is 100% superwash Merino. And by the way, here's my tag. All right, so the colorways that I've used so far, starting at the bottom, this is chiffon, and there's a skinny stripe right here of Magical Creatures. This is Stardust. This is Belladonna. And this is Graveyard, which was my Halloween colorway from last year. And that is what I'm working with right now. And I am using the entire skein. And for, for the chiffon and the stardust, I also used the entire skein. This is just one whole skein crocheted up. And for these little stripes here, they were just leftovers. So I have caked up, is this, this is also a leftover, for the next stripe. This is Venus, so that's what I'm gonna use. And then that's all that I have set aside right now for this blanket, so I'm definitely gonna need more yarn. It kinda seems like I'm going with like all my pinks and purples, so maybe we'll continue with that, but I might also deviate and just kind of use other random colors. I'm not sure yet, we'll see how I feel when I get to the end of what I have. But, I love working on this thing so much. It's really fun. I really like this just kind of endless back and forth mindless crocheting. It's really simple, it's really easy, and it's a really good time. The only thing is, is I do have to look at it. So if I'm watching something particularly interesting, I cannot work on it because I have to be watching something that I don't care if I miss what's on the screen. Okay, that is it. It's everything I've been working on these past two weeks. I've been putting a lot of time into the arachna. I'm trying to get that off the needles because I'm kind of ready for it to be off the needles, if you know what I mean. I do still have more sweaters that I want to work on. I've been daydreaming about other sweaters. I've been daydreaming about a sweater whose pattern doesn't exist. So I've been considering making it up, which I've never done before with a sweater. 
I don't particularly want to, but I might because I feel like I need it. Okay, moving on to shop update. Moonstone Dye Works uh, will be having some new yarn on new yarn in the shop as you watch this episode, so I will show that to you now. I'm gonna go get it. So as it is autumn now, we have um, some things happening in the autumnal world of living. We have Halloween coming up. So I have my new 2019 Halloween colorway that I came up with that I am in love with. And I actually think might be the next colorway in the blanket. So here it is. This is Dusty Spiderwebs, and it's pinks and grays and greens and stuff. And I really like it. I'm super, super into it. Kind of the, the sweater that I'm picturing that I can't find a pattern for that I might make up, I'm picturing it in this. So I don't know. We'll see. But... Here's Dusty Spiderwebs. This is available in the shop now for all of your Halloween knitting needs or crocheting needs or whatever you're going to do with it. So there's that. Okay, that's all I have to say about it. It's great. I like it. It's Halloween. The other new colorway that I, that you can find in the shop is called hard cider because it is the season of hard apple cider to me and this is it so hard cider is like really rich peaches and oranges and forest greens and like creamy beiges creamy it's a real creamy colorway so i love this one too it's another autumn colorway that I've got in the shop for you now. If you're interested, go check it out. There's a link below to the Moonstone Dyworks yarn shop. Hope you like it. Okay, now moving on to sewing. Did I do that out of order? Probably, I don't know. Okay, so my sewing segment isn't anything that I have sewn yet, but it is something that I got in the mail from my mother who made Lucy a quilt and now she has passed it off to me to finish the quilt. So I'm going to be asking for your advice a little bit. So it's amazing. And I love it more than you could possibly know. And I'm going to show it to you now. So this is it. This is the quilt that my mother made for Lucy. And it is the best quilt ever made in the history of quilts. For one, my mom is not a quilter. She has never made a quilt before, but she made this quilt for Lucy. Um, and for two, the other reason why this is so great is because the material that she used is our, my father who passed away when I was 18. She cut up a bunch of his old shirts to get the fabric for this. And so that's what this is entirely made of. All of this fabric and this piecework, or whatever you call it, are all my dad's old shirts. And that's just freaking incredible because Lucy is not ever gonna know him. And so now she's got this to kind of, you know, have. And that's, I mean, it, it it's completely and deeply moving to me, so. <laughs> um, and the thing about my dad is that he was very into he was a really wonderful person. Me and him were really, really close. Um, and he was really into clothing. He loved clothes. And he really liked these, like, they're kind of this, like, standard middle-aged white guy uniform shirts. Where <laughs> they're they're button-up collared shirts with short sleeves that you wear untucked. You know the look with, like, khaki shorts? That was my dad. So he had a ton of these shirts and he collected them. He loved his collection of shirts. And, um, and my mom kept them. He, I mean, he passed away a pretty long time ago and she still has them because they're really special. And she, she 
broke into them to make this amazing quilt. And so it's really awesome and it's really special and I just love it so much. And I think Lucy's gonna love it too. So she made the quilt, she did the piece work, she did the batting, she got a kind of piece of coordinating fabric to put on the back. She hand stitched the binding and she did a fantastic job. I'm so impressed with her. So the thing that I am now going to do is to either quilt it, you know, like quilt the stuff to the stuff. I don't know quilting terminology or do the little ties. So kind of what me and her originally discussed was doing that type of quilt where it's just you have little like pieces of yarn or string tied like knotted in every corner throughout the whole thing and that holds it together because neither of us like actually quilt or have a quilting machine or anything like that now i've been considering actually quilting it just on my regular sewing machine so what i'm thinking is just stitching in the ditch along all the uh, seams around the squares and I think that could work fine. Like I watched Jacqueline of Brooklyn, Brooklyn Knit Folk's uh, quilt tutorial, the episode where she talks about quilting and she, I was surprised to see, actually has the little ties in there as an option as well. Because I never really knew that to be like a really proper thing to do. It's just kind of, I don't know. It's, it's what I'm used to seeing, because I don't know that many actual quilters. So I think that is a really decent option, but she also just quilted, just did stitch in the ditch, like on a reg, I think on a regular sewing machine. So I'm tempted to do that. Um, now I don't know if my mom did the spray adhesive. I don't think she did. Um, I think she thought I would be concerned about like the chemicals because it's for Lucy who's a baby and like chemicals and the spray adhesive. So I don't think she did the spray adhesive. So I think also that actual sewing through it is going to be a little safer than using ties. Uh, because I also have another quilt that my grandmother made for Lucy and that's how she did it. She took two solid pieces of fabric, put quilt batting in the middle and just did like a bunch of ties regularly. And I've washed that and it's great. It's still like in good condition, but the quilt, the batting on the inside is bunched a little bit. So I'm kind of worried that if I just do the ties on this, that might happen. So I'm thinking of just sewing it on my sewing machine. So if you have opinions on that, let me know if you have advice or tips or opinions on which way I should go, let me know. Um, I do know that the binding is done, so doing the quilting after the binding probably isn't the typical way to do it, but that's okay. I mean, you know me, I'm not a perfectionist at all. So let me know. Um, something else that I would like your opinion on is that, um, so in the video that Brooklyn Knit Folk Jacqueline did, it looks like she just did it on her sewing machine. Keep in mind, I didn't watch the whole series. I just watched that one video. My mom told me that one of her quilter friends told her that if we were to do this on a regular sewing machine, you would need a specific foot. What do you think? <laughs> Can I just do it on my sewing machine? Should I buy a special foot? Um, is the special foot necessary or does it just make it easier? I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you think. So this is going to be a project that I am going to be working on really soon um, and we'll see. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the ties or the sewing machine yet, but once I do it and once it is completely finished, I will show you again and I'm super stoked. I really love quilts. I've never had a quilt and now I currently have three quilts, including this, which is just so special to me because I love quilts. I think they're so cool. Don't want to make one. But I think they're so amazing. Um, okay, so anyway, that's the new quilt. I just love it so much. It's the best. It's the best quilt ever. 
Okay, moving on to favorites. I have one thing to talk about in favorites this week, and that is that my friend Chevis from the Chevy, Chevy Rail Stuff podcast opened an Etsy shop, and she is selling the coolest things. So Chevis, among a lot of other things, does soldering. And if you don't know what soldering is, it's kind of, it's basically melting metal to other things. Um, if you know stained glass, the thing, the metal things in between all the glass pieces, that's soldering. Um, and I was actually uh, briefly really into soldering when I was a teenager because my mom was also really into soldering at some point previously in her life. And so she had a lot of materials in the garage. And I used to play with soldering as a teenager and I think it's a really cool, I don't know, thing to play with. And uh, so Sheva solders, she's been soldering some really interesting, unique, really cool stuff that is related to fiber arts. And so she opened a shop. It's on Etsy. You should totally go check it out. I don't know if there's anything in the shop yet. I think she completely sold out, but I do know that she is working on more stuff. So, so she will have more updates in the future. Um, but I will link to her shop down below and I'm going to show you what I bought from her. So this is a necklace. And what she did was she actually took knit fabric. I think this was from a swatch that she knit. She sandwiched it between two pieces of glass. So that's the pearl side. And then she soldered around it to a ring and put it on a necklace. Isn't that incredible? I love it so much. When she first showed these on her podcast, I just fell in love with them. And I knew I had to have one. Had to have one. And... Um, so I bought one and when it came in the mail, it came with a little bit of extra stuff because she is awesome. So she also makes um, needle minders, which are these with magnets on the back, which I was really tempted to get as well. And then stitch markers and progress keepers. So she included this. It's a progress keeper. It's a glass bead with soldering around it. And then this one is a quartz crystal with soldering on top. And then she also included one smaller one of these. It's like a mini version, like that big, but it's currently on my Arachna and I did not show you, but that's, it's, it's in use right now. So thank you so much, Chevis, for making awesome stuff and for sending me extras. I love everything. I love this necklace so much. And um, you should definitely check out her stuff, check out her podcast. It's in addition to being one of my very favorite podcasts. It is also where you can see um, her showing off some of her soldering stuff that she makes occasionally. She doesn't like show it off every episode, but sometimes you can see the things that she makes on there. Okay, that is it. That is everything that I um, am bringing to you this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please feel free to uh, like and subscribe and stuff. And I hope you're having a wonderful fall. I hope you are drinking lots of hard cider or soft cider, fresh cider, whatever kind of cider you like to drink. Or I hope you are um, not walking into dusty spider webs. I'm the type of person who, um, either out of laziness or fondness for dusty spider webs, it has a lot of them in my house because I don't go through and uh, clean them out of all the corners. I should. I really need to. But I like them, kind of. I like dusty spider webs. They're creepy, and they give a fun haunted mansion-y kind of vibe. Also, I'm just lazy. Anyway, <laughs> um, have fun with anything that you're making. Uh, join in the flashy make-along if you feel so inclined. Uh, check out the Moonstone Dioric's shop update in the shop right now. And uh, come say hi over on Instagram and in the Ravelry group. Love you guys. Have fun and stay awesome. Bye.